Hey Tubies! This is one of three video responses back to video responses that were done from the last video I did of my confession video, which is interesting and I'm so excited that there have been some video responses um, because in one of the video responses uh, was hashtag the color mage aka Bernard Charles such a sweetheart love that boy anywho um, and he's right you know it's something that is not really done anymore back in 05 06 and I think all the way up until about maybe 2010 people did do video responses and there was even an option when you uploaded a video that you could select a video to attach it so to speak to the video that you were responding to so it was really neat to um, be able to see that and not only was it neat but it was also a lot easier to find you know now you got to upload the video and either paste it in the comments or you have to email it to that person so on and so forth um, and if you know they get a whole bunch of mail and it just kind of seemingly passes on by and gets lost in the mix of everything so it never gets seen and that's a shame because you really have to search to see you know, a lot of people don't know about tagging properly. Um, hell, I'm still learning it. And, you know, they're shifting around things so much that it's not always easy to find and come by. And people that just like to upload videos just to interact and, and put themselves out there, um, it's not, they don't know the algorithms and the key words that they need to do, hashtag, hashtag, yada, 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 to make sure that it gets seen by the people that need to see it. So, um, interesting fact, but, um, not that there was, I think there's been five video responses so far, which is to me is fantastic. And, uh, not that I pick certain ones above any other because one's better than the other by any means. Um, but as I sit there and I listen to these videos and I watch them, um, and I go to type comments, it's, <laughs> There's just no way to express in words and be able to, without having to type a whole book of what I think about, you know, what they had to say and how I feel about what they had to say and how completely honored I am that you um, all have taken time out of your day, your busy lives to make a video response to little old tiptoey, witchy, crazy ass, bitchy me. So, you know, I really cannot express that enough. And I think it is just so fantastic. And, um, yeah, I hope there are more. I hope it continues. Um, you know, bring it on, pass it along. Be real confessions. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Bring it on. Um, so this one is going to specifically be for, um, well, I can't even say that because there's just, there's for a couple of them. Um, one of them, I need a little bit more note writing to touch on a few points because it was intense and, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I might get them all three in here. Who knows? Okay. We're going to wing it. Um, so first I'm going to respond back to, uh, Cora. Cora, you are such a beautiful beautiful soul and listening to you speak is like the most soothing comforting it's like sleeping in a cloud and being hugged by a marshmallow awesome goodness of love you're just something else and you've only made one other video and um is when you're putting yourself out to uh, let me know how inspired you were by my videos and such. And I cannot tell you how touching that really is. And it's still to this day, uh, it's very hard for me to swallow and accept in a lot of ways because, you know, like I've always said to everybody that I don't feel that I'm better than anybody else um, whatsoever. And, you know, do I put myself out there and be real and raw? Absolutely. Uh, sometimes I get scared of how raw I want to be. Uh, I've been tiptoeing around. 
ironically enough, about a certain video subject that I want to do so bad. And just, I don't know. But anyway, getting off the subject. So, Cora, you beautiful, cloud hugging, marshmallowy, loving, goodness soul, you, my goodness girlfriend. Uh, first and foremost, if and when you ever do make it up to Washington to visit your family, I would absolutely love to have a meetup. Um, there is quite a few people in this area that, um, that are nearby, uh, to do a meetup would be really fantastic, but to do lunch, uh, to hang out with you, I would love that. Absolutely. So let me know whenever that happens. No rush. I ain't going anywhere. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, you know, it's interesting because listening to you, you're so sweet and real about everything that you said. I can also feel your stress. Uh, you're seemingly frustrated and getting impatient in some ways, but God, you handle it so well. Um, and you're just so pristine, I guess you could say. I don't know the proper word for it, but, um, yeah, you're just golden girlfriend and don't ever lose that. And I wish you the best of luck in your vet, vet, veterinarian tech adventure. And I know you're going to do good. And as far as you do when you're trying to find a place to live, go with your gut. Make sure you bring all your animals. You know, some people, I'm sure they think, you know, just because somebody has a bunch of animals, like, oh my God, how do you do it? You know what? When you got love for something, it's hard. You can't replace it. You can't tell anybody any different. So rock it out, girlfriend. And, you know, I don't think an apartment is for you. I think, you know, you haven't found the right place because it's not time. And, you know, maybe you're not even meant to be rooted there. Not necessarily you have to go far away, but where you're at in that vicinity, maybe you shouldn't go there. I don't know. Don't root yourself there. Explore your outers. And your next pet for your uh, fire snake all the way. Either snake, the other one that came to mind was a bearded dragon, although I've never owned a bearded dragon. Uh, they seem pretty cool and neat, easy to feed, but uh, I think you dig a snake because you would get you get a lot of fulfillment. I loved having my snakes very much. I had a few balls in my life, ball pythons, and then my Burmese pythons. Um, regular female Burmese python, Cleo, Cleopatra. She was a bitch, man. And then um, I had Max, Maximus, albino Burmese python. Man, he was so cool. But I got to a time in my life where, and they were, they're big. They're big, man. But I got to a time in my life where I just could no longer keep them um, and, and be able to take care of them the way that I, you know, believe that they should. So they both got good homes and, you know, all is all. You know, other than that, I've had chihuahuas and hamsters and a couple puppies. But yeah, you uh, you're, you're a neat chick, man. I dig it. And I think you should go with a bit of snake. Just saying. You want my opinion. I think you'd really enjoy that for your fire element animal. And uh, although if you can't handle the whole like feeding them mice kind of thing, even though you don't have to do it live, um, go with a bearded dragon. That's what came to me. But yeah. And I did want to clarify because because the way you said something, um, I wondered if it came across wrong to other people. But when I mentioned about high maintenance friendships and relationships, mainly, you know, high maintenance friendships, um, one thing that when it comes to a new friendship for me, uh, I'm more than willing, if I connect with somebody, I'm more than willing to put myself out there. Uh, in all honesty, I'm still terrified because I always give people the benefit of the doubt starting off and I will, um, I can't say I give them full trust, <laughs> but I do give them the benefit of the doubt and give them a real chance on things. And, and I'm absolutely honest and I don't hide anything. You know, I don't, uh, walk on eggshells around them and, uh, you know, try to impress them. I'm always me always. And 
I try not to come across too harsh, especially if they seem a little, um, I don't want to say sensitive, but prim and proper. I, I, I don't really know how to state that, but you know, and, and what always seems to happen to me is I give, 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 give so much. And you know, and I'm, I'm told that, yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. You know, I, I'm like that too. And I'm like, cool. You know, and I people, when people tell me something, I will believe it. Like I always take caution and precautions, but you know, I'm not going to question you in every way, shape and form. If you say you're one way and you come out to be not that way, it's frustrating. So, um, I do, you know, in a new relationship, I do put the effort, but, uh, you know, it either lasts and gets to the point where we're both comfortable with how things go or, um, it, or it doesn't last like, uh, me and Piper, for example, the way we met was very interesting and it was very cool. And some of you know the story and such, but, um, you know, and I consider us friends and do we talk all the time? No, uh, we probably talk twice a year, honestly. And, you know, we'll follow each other on social media and like, like, click, click and comment eh, every once in a while. Um, you know, and send each other love here and there and short little messages. But as far as, you know, chit chatting on the phone and, and things, you know, no, we don't do that. But, but, but anytime we ever do, and you know, it just, our paths seem to cross back again and we're able to keep, you know, be in touch. It's like, we've been talking every day for the past 10 years. Um, you know, nothing's changed. And that's something that, um, I freaking love about her. And, um, and that's something that I think makes our friendship so strong and, you know, and that's something I feel that is very important in a lot of friendships. It's cool when you can, you know, somebody's there if you need them, um, and vice versa. And when you go to talk, it's, you get right to the point and you catch up and you know, to skip all the BS and weather talk to chat and, you know, and that's the way it should be, you know, like, but. I mean, if I go longer than a week talking without talking to my sister, I go nuts because, you know, my sister, she's my, she's my BFF, man. I, I love her a bunch. Um, so yeah, and you were talking about going to, um, <laughs> you're talking about real quick, you're not talking about your mom, you know, <laughs> and things that she does that drives you crazy. Uh, yeah, like, uh, my mom, one of the things that used to drive, gosh, it drives me nuts, but she, vacuum like you know go whether I go in town and stay for a week or so and visit or even when growing up you know me and my sister lived there and such you know she likes to get up and have her you know coffee and such and and she likes to freaking whip out the vacuum and you do it it drives me nuts I love that woman but she drives me crazy so yeah it was kind of funny I was cracking up when you're talking about that and then um when you go to San Francisco, uh, it's a cool city. Me and my husband went there uh, last, not this past September, but in 2015 we went and saw ACDC when they went back on tour uh, before uh, Brian Johnson um, ended up getting out of it. But San Francisco is a cool city, man. It's it's interesting, that's for sure. Um, and I... <laughs> I wanted to be a little bit more prepped doing this and to have the name of the couple restaurants that we really dug out there. And man, I tell you what, if you're, I don't know if you're a big bread eater. They've got some badass bread out there. The hamburgers, their buns are awesome. Um, it's cool. It's expensive. It's expensive as hell in San Francisco. Um, but a lot of cool people watching, that's for sure. In every way, holy moly, my husband was laughing at me a lot of the times with that because of my face with some of the people that were there. It's like, whoa, it's a little much. Um, but um, yeah, uh, FYI, disclaimer, if you want to do the whole trolley thing, it's uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. The nostalgia of it is really neat. Um, but, you know, paying $9 and waiting two hours to get on a trolley to ride and have someone's ass in your face if you happen to sit down. It's just not very fun. Um, it's very claustrophobic. <laughs> That's how it's for me. So it needs to say I'll never get on a trolley again in San Francisco. Um, if you want to get anywhere and you don't want to walk up the massive hills, even though it'll make your 
legs and ass get the workout of a century, which is amazing afterwards. Um, cab rides are awesome and they're super cheap compared to anything else really. Just saying, little tip, 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 tip there. And then, uh, yeah, in the, in the architecture there is just amazing. It is so beautiful. It really is. And the art all the way around. But San Fran, it's cool. It's muggy, tot, lots of hills. Cool stuff, though. It's a neat place to visit. I can never live there. I don't know how you people do it. But cool stuff. Um, and then when you use the term hostels for hotels and Airbnbs and such, man, Anytime I hear the word hostel, I think of the movie, and it just, and I get the image of the girl getting her eye blown torch, blow torched off, and it just creeps me out every time, and I just, I don't know, I can't handle that. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, let you know, you know, girl, you, you're going to get that dream that you are working so hard for, and you are just such a pure, beautiful soul, and I want you to know that. I wanted to tell you that directly and let you know that, yes, when you do make it up to Washington, you let me know, um, and, uh, and we'll make it happen. Uh, it's good stuff. Enjoy yourself camping. I love camping. Love me some camping. The real camping, not glamping. My gosh, but camping. It's fun. Uh, can't wait to take the kiddos when it gets a little bit warmer out for him, but yeah, so that's that. So then the next person I wanted to um, do a response to is, um, she goes by Rebel Child Tarot, and um, I'm not quite sure how old she is, but girlfriend, intense and ballsy as hell you are. You are so brave and I commend you for speaking about what you did. You are an incredible, brave young lady, and you have a beautiful voice, just so you know. And the fact that you are able to handle and overcome and avidly work so hard to overcome all the trials and tribulations that you have been through, um, is incredible and very inspirational in itself. And, um, I, you gave me goosebumps when, towards the end, when you were singing your song, um, that you said that, you know, motivated you so much and helped you during times. And the fact that you, uh, let yourself go recording yourself through your, thoughts and emotions and you go from yelling to screaming and crying and talking and such is fantastic and I think that is just so awesome and just know that you are absolutely beautiful and I am very sorry you have had to struggle no way you have um especially with you know uh coming out with your lifestyle and being gay uh, I just, you know, I'll never understand people that just simply have pure hate in their heart because of somebody's sexual preference. You know, do I, do I always understand? No, I don't. Um, you know, do, <laughs> do I go and I, you know, I'm tempted to watch, you know, gay porno? No, I don't. But do I care it's out there? No, I don't. Um, you know, there's some, you know, there's some straight people that are into some weird shit, man. And I'd feel more comfortable watching gay porn than I would have to the fetish porn that's out there for straight people. So, you know, and the people that have such an issue with it, you know, if you have an issue with it, just don't say anything. You know, if you don't like a certain TV show on a channel, you don't watch it, right? Or you don't read the book if it doesn't interest you, right? So, you know, just because somebody's lifestyle is different than yours or sexual preference is different than yours doesn't mean that you have to um, condemn them to hell and make it like they are doing something wrong you know um, I just don't understand it and for 
parents to... When your child comes out and tells you that they are gay, and you as a child coming out to your parents and telling them that you're gay, you know, that is telling anybody that you love, uh, that you have taken on or taken on a certain lifestyle or dream or ambition or anything, practice, spirituality, anything, faith that you know is completely against what you grew up with or what your family believes, you know, that is so brave when you're able to come out and, and be honest and real with them. <coughs> Excuse me. And as being the member that you are being told this new news, unveiling news from your child or sibling, and so on and so forth, you know, you, before you reject it and get defensive or uh, negative about it, you know, you really need to think about your actions on it because, and recognize how much strength and bravery it took for them to come to you and that you must have done something right in a sense that they felt comfortable enough to come to you instead of hiding and sneaking around they're coming to you with something that is so important to them and you taking it all in shouldn't reject them for it because that is going to not only tarnish them forever in feeling comfortable enough to talk to anybody that they trust, um, it's going to put a bad taste in their mouth about you yourself. And so, um, girlfriend, I hate it for you. You know, I really do. And don't let it bother you as much as you can, and you seem to be doing just fine, you and your vulgar <laughs> girlfriend self. Oh my goodness. But yeah, you know, and being and growing up in a, in, in a household or in a situation to where there is so much chaos and static and, you know, static vibrations and you, you're walking on eggshells, that is the worst feeling in the world, especially when it's somebody that you love and you can't just cut them out of your life. Um, I can relate to that very much and it is one of the most difficult things in the world to deal with. So um, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, just because people are like that doesn't mean that you are doing anything wrong. And keep believing in yourself and know that you are beautiful and you know, do what you do, man. Keep it going on and don't ever be ashamed. And the only thing I could say is if you ever need strength, you just seek out and you find people that interest you, um, or that you're drawn to. And even if it's for a short bit, but don't ever stop loving yourself because you are a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. And, you know, you both are. And I think that Everybody deserves to be loved. Everybody. And they deserve to be loved in the way that they need and required to be loved. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to fight to tell somebody and get them to accept you, love you a certain way. I just, I, I don't understand that at all. Um, and it does exist and it's hard to be in relationships with people like that. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, so those are the two that really, you girls, you really touched my heart in a lot of ways. And not that any of you other women did not. <laughs> uh, Miss Susie cracking me up. And uh, kitty, kitty, cat, cat. Girlfriend, girlfriend, <laughs> crack, crack me up, yelling at her dogs and shit. You guys, you just seriously, you made my day. And uh, and it was awesome. I'm, I'm so, I cannot tell you how excited I was to get some video responses, you know. 
last but not least, and you know, it's this is to Bernard, aka the color mage, color mage. Boy, you are something else. You grown so much in the past 10 years and I just remember what you taken off with your own talk show and you were just so motivated and you've always just been a go go getter and you've never let anything get you down and you were the very first ever in my whole life to give me a color reading and I have to say that you were right on point holy shit and you really helped me out in a lot of ways. Um, cracking me out with I got the boobies. You got the boobies. I got the boobies. I was even talking back to you watching that thing. I just need to make videos while I'm watching some of these video responses and post it up. Because, oh man, that was so much fun. I was packing up some DVDs and such. and <laughs> I got the boobies. But you really did. What did I do with that piece of paper? There it is. But you really did touch. You touched me in a lot of ways, and it was so awesome. Um, let's see here. Yes, you're right about self-criticism, making myself angry. For sure. Beauty, no duty. Yeah, you got it. My challenge is how... The lesson, I guess, you said that really touched me is how is whatever I'm doing, how is whatever we're doing, maturing my love. And you're right. Um, that really hit home with me. I'm actually going to do get a whole other video subject on that. Uh, but you're right. I mean, you're right on about me being scared and paranoid and, and worried and thinking too much being too hard on myself and, and worried about doing everything just right. Um, you know, not only because I expressed it in my last video, but because I really do worry and, you know, and I get my business sense mixed up with just my, my gut and my internal side of, you know, just my intuition of how I want to do things or how I feel I need to do things and to keep real to myself. And, and it, I really do end up battling myself and it just it drives me nuts. Um, and you're right. I can't do it alone. I can't. And, uh, trying to figure out the best way to build a team, so to speak, is, is very, uh, hard on me. It's been, it's been quite the challenge. Now I have had a few things come by, which has helped greatly. Um, but, uh, there's still, there's still quite a bit to do. But we'll see. It's all gonna it's all gonna fall into place. I'm really uh, keeping my eyes open, and I'm set, focused on a new mission, on some things. But yeah, I wanted to let you know how fabulous you are, and that you made me smile endlessly all evening. I had permagrin on my face, and you do what you do, and I'd actually love to get another reading from you in a few weeks. See if anything's changed by me taking some of your tips and advice and going with it. Um, yeah, so rock on, you guys. You know, there's there's so many more confessions that I have, I guess. Um, you know, I thought about doing a part two, but uh, I'm not going to promise anything. I'm just going to go with the flow and go as things see fit uh, because I'm trying to switch things up but I just wanted to let you go, guys know that you inspire me so very much and it is an honor to not only have you take the time out to make the videos that you do and put them up uh, f for me to watch but for you to say all the beautiful wonderful things that you do um, I cannot it touches my soul and you know everything and you know in all you tubies that take time to write your amazing comments and you know send messages of love and support and 
everything. You know, I only wish there were five of me so that I may able, so that I would be able to reciprocate uh, the absolute genuine uh, what, appreciation, I guess, that I have for you guys saying and doing. And, you know, you're my fuel. You are my charger. You are my light. And, you know, the reason why I do and continue to do uh, what I do. And it helps me with my mission. Um, so, yeah, lots of things coming up. Big time. Riven that green eyed owl monster up, man. I'm so excited. And, um, yeah. So stay tuned. I've got lots of things coming up. And uh, I hope you guys are doing amazing. I can't believe it's June. Holy crap. Halfway through the year already. Midsummer's coming. Longest day of the year. Dear, <laughs> we got like three weeks. And the days are going to all of a sudden start getting shorter again. I feel like we just got out of winter. This is nuts. But love and light to you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thanks for sticking around. And uh, I love you bunches. I'll see you around. Bye.